Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we are back at the Clutter Zone. And we're working on this, the U.S. Record Truck. This is part five. Oh my god, part five. I'm thinking this is going to drag on for a while. So anyway, let's see where we're at here. Let's get rid of the box. There we go. That box is going to be toast by the time we're done this project. So, what have we accomplished? We've got the hood together. We have the cab assembled. Now, of course, the interior is just in there loosely. We got some putty on the top because there's a seam that runs along there. The sleeper is being worked on. And the most of the chassis work is done. Although I will admit to a big boo-boo, big screw up here. Maybe not a big screw up. Certainly a silly one though. If I flip over the chassis and we look at the mufflers, you can see there's a hole at the back of each one. And the reason for that is when I started working on those parts, I took them off the sprues I noticed that there was uh, open holes at the front of the muffler and then there was some flashed over holes at the back. And instead of looking at the instructions and looking ahead, I just assumed, oh, well, I've got to open up these holes because, of course, the exhaust goes in the front of the muffler and comes out the back. Yeah, that's true if you're building the Aeromax, which had the stacks coming up behind the cab. This is not the Aeromax. This truck has the exhausts coming up around the outside of the cab, like the sides. So the exhausts actually mate up to the top. So I went and basically drilled two large unnecessary holes on the backs of my mufflers. So obviously I'm going to have to make a circular plate, glue that on, touch up the paint. Oh well, you know, it says they say, always look ahead on the instructions just to make sure. So, one of the first things we're going to work on this week is we're going to work on this instrument panel here on the, uh, on the dashboard. See if we can't get that done. Because that's really holding up the interior of the truck. Because otherwise, we're there. You can see we've got the door panels painted and... Here is the roof. Just got to do a little bit of a wash on that. So let's get moving. So as mentioned in part one, this is the decal that Italeri gives you for the the instruments on the dashboard. And I'm I'm not against using decals for this sort of thing, but in this case, a red background really. I'm, I'm just stunned. <laughs> and I mean, I know it goes with the overall paint scheme they suggest for the truck, but I'm just, I can't go with it. I'm just not buying it. So, however, the actual instruments themselves, I think, are usable. So what my plan is, is I'm going to take a piece of 10th house styrene, and I'm basically going to drill holes everywhere where there's one of the instruments, then I will put, I'll apply the decal to the actual dashboard, and then I'll put the 10,000 styrene on top, and that will give some depth. That way the, the images of the instruments will actually be inset a bit, and it'll make it easier to paint the, the overlay a different color, and it'll give the whole thing a lot more realism. At least that's what my plan is, and let's see how that turns out. So we're just going to make a couple copies of this. So we have a template for our dashboard. Let's come to an undisclosed location that we don't want to identify. Because we don't want to be giving any, any free advertising. So we're at the undisclosed location. That was easy. Right, so here's our black and white photocopy of the decal sheet. Now I could have, I suppose, 
scanned it into a computer and on an artwork file I could have maybe changed some of the colors and things like that. But then I still would have had to make a decal out of it. So I might still do that, but let's try this process first. So I'm going to cut this out and that's going to be my template for drilling my holes. All right, keeping in mind that the paper, which is going to be removed, is a little furry. Hopefully you can see what I'm trying to achieve here. You can see that the decal, once I apply it to the dashboard, will be visible through the holes that I've drilled. That's all the drilling I'm going to do. I might still widen some of these holes and probably polish them out. As you can see, I've only cut out two of the rectangular holes. Um, they seriously weakened the piece of plastic, so I decided not to do these upper ones here. I'll see what it looks like once I get it all sanded. But there you can see the back side. And let's try to get that paper off. Well, using the debonder didn't make the paper come off all in one sheet, but it did soften things up enough that I was able to just scrape it off using a fingernail. I'm going to give this a very light sanding and see if I can get it down to bare plastic. A small change in plans. I was originally going to put the decal uh, on the dashboard part itself, but now I think I'm going to glue or apply it to a piece of 10,000 styrene. And then that way I can actually cut it into pieces and align it properly with the holes so that if I'm off anywhere. And I've also discovered that the decal is slightly larger than the space that it would sit in the dashboard anyway. Now that wouldn't be a problem if you were just applying the decal to that space. But seeing as I'm going to be putting a solid piece of plastic in there, some trimming is going to be necessary. I should be able to cut this up and apply it to the back side of the front surface of my dashboard. And that way I can, if there's any elements on here that are not exactly aligned with the holes I've drilled, then I can fudge it a little bit. Right now I'm test fitting that front surface into the dashboard housing. And as you can see, it ended up breaking there and there. So I will have to fix that. But once again, since I'm going to be putting this on top of another piece of styrene with the decal on it, that will actually serve to weld these back together again. Hopefully you can get some idea of the effect I'm looking for here. As you can see, all of those dials line up beside or behind the holes that I've drilled. Alright, this looks a little messy, but basically what I've done is I've painted the surrounds of all the holes. I've either painted them black for the vents or the heater controls or silver for the gauges. Next step, I will put some light flat brown over the entire surface, and that will be the start of the wood grain I hopefully will want to put on here. But the idea is to give uh, a little bit of depth. It wouldn't look good with, uh, with a white edge around the gauges. It should either be black or silver. There, a last look at the bad acid trip dashboard before I put it behind my overlay there. And hopefully the whole thing will come together looking pretty good. So my overlay has now been super glued on top of the decal. And you can see the decal sticks out quite a bit in several dimensions. I will be repairing that little notch there just to try to do it before I put everything together. I figured it really wasn't going to work. But the overlay just barely fits inside the dashboard surround. So you can see that the decal certainly wouldn't have fit in there perfectly. And now we're ready to bring these parts together. And here's what it looks like all put together. Now I realize the decal represented a few more switches and things like that. And I probably could have tried to add them in. But this certainly looks a whole lot more realistic than that bright red decal. And it certainly has some depth to it What with the, uh, with the dials and the vents and things like that inset into the dashboard material. 
And here's our interior all put together. Like I said, I think the work on the dashboard was worth it. And I'm still going to do a little bit more work I'm going to be doing on the firewall. But that's going to have to wait until the, the cab gets basically assembled. Now, this is a comparison shot of the AMT Louisville that is in all of their kits, which are based on the Ford Louisville. And of course, here is our Italeri cab on the right. Now, it is in a slightly bigger scale, 124th scale versus AMT's 125th scale. And I think it is better, the better cab. The Italeri cab, mind you, it was tooled probably 20 years later. One area where it does fall down, though, is the firewall. The one in the AMT kit looks like it is a stamped metal piece, which is welded into the front of the cab. Whereas the Italeri cab, what it looks like is, is a convenient assembly of plastic parts. So I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to be correcting this, but I am going to see what I can do to perhaps uh, make the Italeri firewall look a little bit better. I know most of the time it's going to be inside the, the hood or the bonnet, but it is something that's been bothering me a little bit. This putty may look scary, but once it's sanded down, it'll be barely more than a line, and it'll certainly... Uh, have a much better appearance, especially seeing as on the real truck, this is all one piece of metal going up to the front where the windshield is. Well, it's time to head off to the paint booth, at least as far as our cab is concerned, because I can't do anything more to this and the other parts until they're painted. And what I need to do is I need to mount my grill on here, because that is what the hinges mount on. And I need to have that so that I can finalize the placement of the cab on the chassis and everything like that. So like I said, a lack of paint is holding me back. It's time to bite the bullet and paint my cab parts. I've started working on the bed and I'm not entirely happy with it, mainly because it just looks way too neat and tidy. So this side here that's actually going to be towards the front, you can see I've put a piece of styrene on here and it's very thin, it's 10,000 styrene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to distort it a little bit uh, with some heat, just using a soldering iron. And then I'm gonna fare it in with some putty. And then hopefully when I paint on the fabric, I'll carry the, the design of the fabric onto it so that when it goes in the sleeper, the, the fabric will drape down over the front here and give the impression that, you know, perhaps the truck driver wasn't absolutely perfect when he made his bed in the morning, which I suspect that wouldn't be the case. So next step. So using my soldering iron and bringing it very close to the one thou or 10 thou styrene, I was able to put some waves and, and unevenness to this so that it looks like it's a piece of fabric hanging down and I'll just put a little bit of filler just along the top edge here just to ferret into the actual bed material before I do any other painting. Right there's our extension of the fabric blended in with some putty and it's been sanded. Let's see what it looks like with some paint on it. So back from the paint booth, and this is a Humbro color. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I believe the number is number 80. And I thought I would go with orange, basically because I'm probably going to be making some of my own decals for this. And I don't have access to an Alps printer, so I want a color that will take a black decal without too many problems 
Whereas if you go with a dark color, you pretty much have to go with a white decal. And like I said, not having an Alps printer, I'm kind of stuck with doing a dark color such as black. So anyway, now I can actually start fitting out the interior of this and uh, in preparation for putting the interior in place. Now we've got our pre-painted door panels and our ceiling panel in place. It's time to paint the rest of the interior a matching color and that'll be this, this dark bluish gray. Get all that painted in. I think I'm probably going to be painting this framework here a slightly different color as well. And a couple hours later, the interior has been painted. And we are close to gluing the windshield in. And I think I'm probably going to put one side glass in and maybe leave the other one off as though um, maybe the window is rolled down. Maybe I'll just put half the glass in here just to be, uh, just to have the no draft in place. Gonna have to think about that. At any rate, we've got the inside all painted up here. And we have the inside of the sleeper painted up. Now I haven't painted the floor. Well, you're never going to see it. So I painted the line, which represents the support for the upper bunk. I painted that silver, but I'm not going to be putting the bunk in. I figure given that, I mean, a, a tow truck driver is probably going to be working on his own. He's not going to be team driving or anything like that. So I can see uh, a tow truck driver quickly taking that upper bunk out. I know I certainly would. And finally, we have our bed. And I deliberately did not pick nice matching colors for the blanket and the sheets and the pillowcase. Let's face it, this truck driver's wife, she probably figures if she's ever lucky enough to see these bed clothes again, if they come in for washing, she'd probably rather burn them. So there's no way she's going to give her husband a nice set of sheets and blankets and stuff for his truck. It's going to be, here, you can use this, and, and when you're ready for some new ones, just burn the old ones. So anyway, uh, Italeri molds a really, really nice, neat pattern on here. I deliberately did not paint it super, super. I mean, I could have masked it, but why bother? Blankets are very rarely ever laid out precisely. And not only that, I wanted the pattern to kind of follow the, the blanket that's hanging over the edge here. Here is a view showing the bed in place and of course the blanket hanging over the edge. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, boy, I can really see in there. Once we put the roof on, it's gonna be a black hole in there. You're barely gonna be able to see anything. So this is one of these things where I've really got to rein myself in from putting a bunch of details in there that nobody's ever going to see. And to make the point, here we're looking in right now, you can barely see that blanket hanging down. And I don't even have the roof in place yet. Okay, can't see anything. Total wasted effort, although in person with some better lighting you can see more than you can see on camera. And Hopefully we will be able to see inside better and I can show you how things look later on once I get everything assembled. We've glued the windshield in place here, as you can tell by all the fingerprints. And that was done using white glue. And I've made a decision concerning the side windows. And that is I want to have the windows in the lowered position. That'll make it easier to look inside the truck and see any details that we managed to put in there. The problem is the vent windows. The vent windows, even when the main window is down, they're in place. And if we look at the kit parts, you can see they have a substantial thickness to them. And I know car and vehicle glass is thick, but it's only maybe 
an eighth of an inch thick, whereas in scale this is probably almost three quarters of an inch thick. So rather than trying to cut a strip off of these, I've used some acetate from Evergreen Styrene. You can see that they've been cut right here and these will get glued into the vent window slots once again with white glue so if a tiny bit squeezes out it won't be noticeable. Now the cab floor and the firewall have finally been glued in place and you can look into the back of the cab there. One thing I still need to work on, I'm not worried about this little bit of dark paint right there that's oozed out. That's going to be chrome or silver later. But as I mentioned in that earlier clip, I'm going to do something about the firewall just to bring it a little closer to what AMT molded. So now that I've got this glued onto here, I can work on that. And I think basically I'm going to put the arch that you can see in the Italeri kit. I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to put probably the two strips that run up. I'm going to fabricate those and put them in place. I fabricated and installed the first of the rivet strips. So there's going to be one there. This one isn't going to be in two pieces obviously because this is in the way. And then this is the arch one that goes over the doghouse where the engine intrudes. So here's our rivet strips in place and I'm going to be painting the firewall here pretty much a really dark gray and we'll see what that looks like when it's all done. Okay so here's our firewall all painted up. I might still add a few more details later of course eventually I will once it's installed on the truck I'll be putting the steering wheel shaft down and the paint I ended up using for this is a paint I haven't used before and it's actually called to me a dark iron which is a very interesting looking color I think I'll probably be using that more often in the future at any rate, this particular episode of Dan's Model Works has gone a bit longer than I had anticipated. I was thinking 15 to 20 minutes, and we're over 20 minutes now. I apologize. At any rate, at least we have the basic egg of the, of the cab is done. So, next episode we'll be getting it mounted onto the truck and everything like that. So we can move on to the really interesting bit. So, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works, and until next time... Keep on modeling.